Tons of aid supplies are now arriving at airports in the worst affected areas from countries and organizations around the world. Relief operations are finally picking up pace now two more airports in the region have opened. Amongst the items, water and sanitation equipment, medical supplies, shelter and food. But despite all this aid now coming in, only a small amount is getting to the people who desperately need it. A lack of trucks and blocked roads is hampering efforts, so citizens like these do what they can. On Leyte Island, the owner of this store is giving away everything. They queue patiently despite their hunger, grateful for those personal acts of kindness. The delivery of relief goods is quite slow and the people are in need. The truth is, we're not really giving relief goods, but whatever's left in our store. The Philippines government has defended its aid response amid mounting criticism that thousands of people are not being helped. But considering what we have been through the past four months, I think we're doing quite well. This is the largest logistics operation that we've ever done in the history of the Philippines. There's nothing like this has ever been done before. Now, you add the situation of a, of a destroyed logistic system, you know. On Wednesday, the UN World Food Program distributed rice and other items to nearly 50,000 people in the Tacloban area. But the fact it's not enough demonstrates the sheer scale of this disaster. Israel has sent a military humanitarian team enough to build, staff and run a field hospital. Treating the injured are amongst the most serious concerns, along with the spread of disease in the worst hit areas. Along with millions of dollars raised from around the world, a British warship is on its way and a US one will be arriving this week. An international task force is being formed to send to the devastated regions. America says the number of U.S. troops helping the relief effort could triple to more than 1,000 by the end of the week. Katerina Moe, BBC News.